Now, Log gets a Z-Rod upgrade. So right now, a lot of you are asking yourself, why am I watching a video on swapping out lead screws? Isn't that kind of easy? Well, you would think so, wouldn't you? Recently, I had a conversation with one of our most valuable community members, Daniel Halverson. He's a regular over on the Canadian Maker Project live streams, and if you haven't checked out Ron over at CMP, please do so. Daniel was explaining at length the differences between lead screws, ball screws, thread pitch, etc. And that got me thinking about some of my machines. So I thought now would be a great time to switch out the threaded rods on log with some lead screws, and I'll show you the reason why I chose the ones I did. So here are TR 8x8 lead screws, the most popular lead screw you're going to see around 3D printing. It's an 8mm diameter, 4 starts, a 2mm pitch, and an 8mm lead. So what does all that mean? So they're 8 millimeters in diameter. It has four starts. That means it has four separate thread pads. A two millimeter pitch, that means the threads are two millimeters apart. And if you take the number of starts, multiply it by the pitch, you get the lead, which is eight millimeter. That's a linear distance traveled by one rod rotation. So here's what that looks like. Assume that you have a motor that takes 200 steps to do one full revolution. You have an 8mm rod with four starts, a 2mm pitch, which multiplied gives you an 8mm lead. Take that lead, divide it by the 200 steps that it takes to do one full revolution, gives you 0.04 millimeters of movement per step. So that's good, right? Well, maybe not. What layer height do you print at? Is it 0.2? then you're probably fine. But what if it's 0.15? Here's what that looks like. So eventually, your printer is going to have to round up or down to achieve that layer height, no matter what your micro-stepping would be. So it's not going to be able to achieve that exact layer. And this is a TR8 by 2 lead screw. 8 millimeter diameter, single start, 2 millimeter pitch. Pitch multiplied by start gives you a 2 millimeter lead. So eight millimeters, you can see these are only single start, it's right there. Threads are two millimeter apart, giving you a two millimeter pitch and a two millimeter lead. So one rod revolution moves two millimeters. And here's what that looks like. Again, assuming you have a motor that takes 200 steps to do one full revolution, an eight millimeter rod, now we have a single start, a two millimeter pitch, you multiply that pitch by the start and you get a two millimeter lead. Now you take that lead, divide it by the 200 steps, and you're gonna get 0.01 millimeters of movement per step. Now take a look at 0.1 and 0.15 layer heights. That means that you can achieve any layer as long as it's in those two decimal places. And it should make your z-axis more accurate. Now the next step we need to do is figure out how many steps per millimeter we need to enter into the firmware for this profile. And Prusa does have a calculator for that. The only problem with the calculator is it doesn't have any presets for multi-start lead screws. So say we're trying to do the TR 8x8 four-start lead screw. We are using 1.8 degree, 200 steps per revolution motors. We're using 16 times micro-stepping. Our lead screws are a two millimeter pitch. But that calculation is going to give you 1600. It doesn't take into account that there's four starts on that lead screw, so it's doing four times the work. So I found the easiest way to compensate for the four start lead screw is just to up the gear ratio. So we'll make it four to one. And for a TR 8x8 lead screw, you would enter 400 in your firmware for steps per millimeter. So what about the TR 8x2 lead screw? It has the same motor step angle, we are using 16 times microstepping, the same lead screw pitch, but it only has a single start. So we'll take the gear ratio, put it back to one, and 1600 steps per millimeter is what you'd enter into your firmware for a TR8 by two lead screw. It takes four times the amount of revolution to achieve the same amount of movement. So now we know what lead screw we're gonna use to replace these sloppy five millimeter threaded rods, but affordable, and why we're gonna replace them, but there's one more issue we need to cover, and that's rod couplers, and there's a couple different options. So we have the popular and inexpensive helical type coupler. It's almost like a spring, 
you can move in the X and Y pretty easily, but you can also move in the Z, and that's not always good. That can really hurt your accuracy. You can do your best to try to put the lead screw on top of the motor shaft, but it's still going to kind of dance around on top of that shaft left and right. And then you have the spider connector, or the plumb connector, which has a plastic bushing in between the motor shaft and the rod. So these couplers aren't actually connected to each other in any way. So the motor side and the rod side are completely separate. And both of the rods will be setting on this piece of plastic. Now this isn't going to be very effective if you have your motors on top, like in an I2 design, but they are really effective if the motors are on the bottom because the shafts don't actually have to touch. They'll ride on this plastic piece. So now we know we're going to go to a TR8x2 lead screw, and I'm going to go from the helical coupler to the spider coupler. While I'm at it, I'm also going to swap out the Z motor mounts and the top lead screw holders just because I'm trying to go to a new color on the log printer. Now all we got to do is the work. Well, we're halfway there. The hardware is all done. Now we need to jump into Marlin and make a quick configuration change. So this is Marlin 1.1.9 and it has already been configured for this printer. But let's head into configuration.h and we can control F and search for movement. This will get you down to movement settings. And before we had five millimeter rods. So my Z steps per millimeter were 4,000. Now that we have our tr 8 by twos installed, that'll change to 1600. Again, we have a motor, 200 steps per rotation, an 8 millimeter rod with a single start, 2 millimeter pitch, giving it a 2 millimeter lead, and 16 times micro stepping. That's 1600 steps per millimeter. I'm also going to up my max feed rate on my Z from 2 to 3 because 2 was all that the 5 millimeter rods could handle. Those are the only changes I'm going to make, and now we can upload to the printer. The upload is complete. Now let's head over to Parameter Face and connect up. And to even the Z-Rods out, just for the initial setting, I just like to run it all the way to the top and let it rest on the top Z holders. And then we can home. Wait a second, wait a second. So, as I was moving the Z-axis around, I noticed one side was starting to bind up a bit. When I was putting this together, I noticed that the Z-nut was actually just a little bit smaller than the nut that Prusa uses. So I just put one screw in and thought I could get by with that. But it turns out, it's just a little bit too far off and it's going to bind the axis. So what do you do when you have this problem? Well, I went to Google and I found a 3D printable Z-nut that will fit it. So I went to the 3D printer and I made some out of nylon. So one moment while I correct this issue. Okay, problem averted. Now, where were we? Oh yeah. So I'm going to bring the Z all the way to the top till it bottoms out on the top Z rod holders to get a rough idea of the X level. Okay, now we're bottomed out up top. I'm going to drop it down a little because if I hit home, I actually collide with my log logo. I need to fix that. So I'm going to drop it down and then we'll hit home. Now what I like to do to level out the X carriage is run a G29 and look at the map and then that'll tell me which side really needs to come up or down. So on the map, the right side of the X actually needs to come up quite a bit. So I'll just adjust it manually at the coupler. And we can G29 again. Still pretty low over on the right side, one more adjustment. And after a couple of G29s, we're looking a lot better. We could adjust it just a little bit more, but I'm pretty satisfied with that. My G29 leveling's a lot faster now, but that's because I increased the feed rate of the Z. I was unable to move that fast with the 5mm rods, and now I can with these new 1 start 8mm rods. I was able to shave 15 minutes off my Benchy print time because Z lift happens faster. That's because now I can move at a higher feed rate. And that's it. Upgrade complete. Now the issues that you'd see on a 4 start lead screw that might make you want to go to a 1 start are going to be very, very minimal. And they're only going to show up if your printer is dialed in 100%. But if it is, and you start seeing a very consistent issue with a layer height, you might want to consider going with a different profile or going with a different layer height. Again, Daniel explains this a lot better, so please go check him out and Ron over at the Canadian Maker Project. I'm sure they'd be more than happy to answer your questions and help out. 
Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.